This is BMW's first fully electric SUV and it's the BMW X3 electrified. It looks fantastic, there's so much to like about it, like the range of 285 miles WLTP. But there are also a few things lacking as well, like that BMW X Drive. But that's a different conversation for a different time. If you want to see our full review, Genie's got a great video on this on the channel, so please do check that out. Before I dive in into the tech on the car, make sure you subscribe and hit that bell notification as well, so you'll be one of the first people to know every time we have a new video up on the channel. Before we get inside the iX3, there are a couple of things to point out on the outside of the car as well. For example, you have various cameras and you've got radar up there that can read traffic lights and uh, speed limit signs and so on. You've also got that BMW adaptive LED as well, which is fantastic. It also has a little trick up your sleeve as well for convenience. So if you've been shopping and you're carrying heavy bags, no extra hand to actually open the boot. So you can actually use your foot to open the boot as well when it actually works, which as you can see, it's uh, responding today. And once you've placed all your item, like my jacket in there, you can just do the same again and the boot will close. There's also a button on there as well that you can press if you do have a spare hand afterwards to actually close the boot as well. The BMW iX3 features a lot of tech on the outside, but inside is actually where the magic happens. If you've driven a BMW X3 before, or, if, or you've just been in a BMW in general, this will be very familiar. So you'd notice the instrument cluster, the touchscreen display there, even the gear shifter and stuff and the buttons. So there's a mixture of old and new technology inside of the car. One thing I do love though, they give you plenty of ways to interact with the system as well. So you can use your hands, like hand gestures. Uh, you can even use your voice as well. You can personalize that, which is pretty cool as well. And they use some artificial intelligence here and there, which I'll talk about as we go into the settings and see how you, you can customize it to really suit your taste. Before I dive into the settings and the infotainment system, we do have some other ports and stuff available as well. So for example, we have a Qi wireless charging area, so you can place your device there if you have a compatible device like my iPhone 12 Pro there. If you don't have your cable with you, that comes in very handy. But if you do have a USB cable, there's a full USB port there, which you can plug in your device and you can charge your phone that way too. Underneath the armrest is a USB-C port and for the passengers at the back, there are a couple of USB-C ports as well. To interact with the infotainment system, you have plenty of buttons here, which is easy to reach for when you're driving, although you shouldn't be doing that when you're driving, but what they've done there is make it safer. So rather than leaning over and touching things on the touchscreen, you can just use the rotary dial, which has a nice tactile feedback. It has this clicky feeling as you rotating and it's very responsive as well. You've also got things like media, menu option, back button and option and so on and so forth. So play with that and see how you prefer to interact with it. But on here is where we can get down and you know change the settings in terms of the instrument cluster, which is nice and bright, as big as well. The main display there is big as well, it's bright. It can, it's visible even in poor lighting situations or bright light situations as well, they work really well. What you have is this layout, which gives you the main uh, feature, the main application that's open. So for example, right now I've got maps and then to the right of it, I've got two other things like my radio and my communication device. So I can see information on that, which is there. On the left side, you can select media, you, you got the uh, internet services, you got navigation, car and applications as well. On the media, obviously you can play music, you can connect your Bluetooth, uh, you can play DAB radio. But what's also good is you've got connected music. In connected music, it just means you can play tons of music already online in the cloud with Napster. So you can play whatever music you like, you can search through it. If we come back out, we can go into here where, which, where it says come. So communication, so you've got contacts, telephone, you've got uh, BMW assistant services, which is where this is actually quite important. So you can con contact BMW if you have any issues and so on. This also brings me to another feature as well, which is remote upgrade as well. So if BMW was to push any updates to the car, they can just push it directly remotely, providing that your car is connected to the internet, you'll be able to get all the latest updates without having to visit the garage or your local dealership. If we go further down into SatNav, just the usual, you can search for destination. And what this will do is also take into consideration things like your charging stations along the way. So if you've got a long journey, it will let you know where you can charge your car along the way, which is very important if you're driving an electric car. On the car, you can change settings, look at your vehicle status, driver information. On the vehicle status is where you can keep track of your tire pressure. You can see all uh, system information and messaging and service requirements. You can have a look at that inside that area. 
you can plan your charging as well. So with this, you can plan when you charge your car. So uh, you can, when you, once you plug it in at home, for example, you can set it to charge at the best time when you can get the lowest tariff as well. So you'd be saving money when you're charging your car in that sense. If you come back out, we can go into settings. In the settings, I like the way that it's laid out as well. So if you go all the way to the end, you can see general settings, driving mode, and so on. Just straightforward, very, uh, it's easy to understand what they actually are. So if you're going to general settings, for example, uh, you can see things right at the top. Uh, but I wanted to show you the personal assistant one where you can actually activate voice control. Uh, so once you activate that, you can also have your activation word. So once you activate that, you can say something like, hello, BMW. I'm here. What can I help you with? What time is it right now? It is 12.41 in the afternoon. Very responsive. It's actually one of the best voice control I've used in a car. Uh, I've tried other cars where you, you say the activation word over and over and over. It doesn't pick it up. And when you do say a command, it doesn't actually understand what you're trying to say. So that's impressive. Uh, it'll be interesting to see how that actually functions when you're driving on the road, when you get the road noise and music playing in the background or whatever. See if it actually still picks up your voice as well. Also one weird feature. I don't know if you'll need it while you're driving though. So you can do this. Hello, BMW. I want to relax. No problem. I have activated the relax program. Hmm. So what that does is basically plays a soothing music to make you feel relaxed whilst you're driving. I don't know if you need that when you're driving though. You don't want to be too relaxed. And it also changes the temperature in the car to make it soothing and the lighting as well. So it gives you a nice mood lighting in the car. The only reason you might need that is whilst you're waiting for your car to charge, you might want to relax and wait for that to happen. If we go all the way back out again, we can go into sound settings. Uh, so this has got the Armand Kardon sound system in the car. So you've got Logic 7 surround sound, uh, which means you can adjust the surround sound system. You can change treble bass and equalize the settings if you know what you're doing, or you can just reset it as well. You can also control things like your touch screen sound, touch pad settings. And when you do the hand gestures, you can actually play sound as well, sound feedback. So you know that is actually working, which is good. Going into gesture control, this is interesting as well. Uh, I think BMW might be the first to do this. I don't know if it's available in any other manufacturers, but if it's useful, that's a debate to have. Let me know what you think in the comments below. And also, I was actually going to ask as well, are you guys team having buttons in the car or just full touchscreen system in the car like the Audi cars, like the Audi e-tron, for example? The gesture control works sometimes. Sometimes it doesn't work, which I'll demo sh shortly as well. But in gesture controls, you have two function assignments that you can also add as well. So you've got gesture one, which is just pointing to start and stop your media system like so. Or you can do that again and it starts the music. Uh, although sound is down at the moment, so you wanna hear it actually come into play, but you can, ha you can hear that sound feedback every time I do it to make sure that it actually works. You can also assign a second gesture, which is something like that. So with that, I can, do, I can attach that to something else. So if I go into there, I can do like no function, mute, navigate to home address, recent phone calls and music recognition. Those are, that's a really good thing. So if I'm driving, it just means less distraction on the road as well. You've got driver attention camera, which I really like. It just means it keeps track of the driver. So uh, if I'm getting fatigued and you know I'm starting to drift and stuff, the car would actually notice that I'm doing that. And that works with a sensor that's actually on top of the instrument uh, cluster there. So the sensor's there with a the camera system. So you can actually activate that. So once you've activated that, it means it keeps track of me and make sure that I'm safe while I'm driving. Although you should have been driving when you're tired anyway. If we scroll further down, we'll see vehicle settings and here we can go into energy recuperation, which is where every time you take your foot off the gas, uh, it can recuperate some of the energy. So energy that would otherwise be wasted, you get that back. So you've got options to go from low, medium, high, and you, go, you can go to adaptive as well, which uses arti artificial intelligence, which I think is quite smart as well. So it takes, it takes away all the work for you thinking about, do I need high, do I need low, do I need medium? It just adapts to the way that you drive, which is pretty cool. Coming out of general settings, right at the bottom again, we're going to drive mode. In driving mode, you can select between sports. Uh, you can select individually change the settings as well to your taste. You've got Eco Pro and you've got energy recuperation settings again. Or you can just press those things here as well. So you've got sport, comfort and Eco Pro. 
Next, let's go into driver assistance, which is another really cool feature here. So we have safety and warning. So you've got things like side collision warning, you've got lane departure warning, lane change warning, front collision warning. So all these safety features to make sure that you stay safe when you're driving on the road. And you've also got your steering wheel uh, intervention as well. So if you're drifting away from your lane, that will come up as well. In the instrument cluster, you can set it so it shows you your driver assistance as well. So you can actually see the car moving. And if you're driving on the road, you can see other cars on the road as well, moving in and out of lane, which is pretty cool when you actually see that in action. Next, we have parking and maneuvering, but there's one bit in here that I wanted to talk about, which is park assist, which again, it's for convenience. You know, I was talking about convenience with a boot earlier. It's also available when you're parking. So for example, it would alert you if there's a, spot, if there's a parking space detected. Uh, so imagine you went into Tesco's or Sainsbury's or whatever, and you pull up, you're trying to find a parking space. This would actually let you know when there's a parking space detected, which again, it's pretty cool when it comes to convenience. You've also got cross traffic alert, which would alert you when there's a car coming in areas where you can't see. So when you're parking, for example, this is very useful. So if you're pulling out of a space, it will let you know if there's oncoming vehicles from behind, that kind of stuff. So again, safety first when it comes to parking. Next, we have displays. This is where you can adjust the way this is displayed, your instrument cluster, the infotainment system. And also we have the heads up display as well, which you can adjust what happens there. So in display settings, we can change the heads up display. So in here, we can change what's been displayed on there, like your speed limit. You can change the height and uh, you can change the position. So when you're driving, you want to set it so it's not distracting, but it's also there and displaying all the useful information so you don't take your eyes off the road. The instrument cluster can be changed as well, so you can change what's actually displayed. So uh, if we go into instrument cluster, the central display area, we can change what's there. So at the moment, I've set it to driving, uh, to display assisted driving view. So it shows me the car, where it is, and cars coming in and out and stuff. But you can also change that to show a full map as well. So one thing I wanted to show you as well is if you toggle this up, you can see your quick notification area. So if you go all the way across, you can adjust the main menu. So you know how we've got the three uh, displays. This is where you can adjust that as well. So uh, here you can change what's there. So I can remove the map there. I can replace it with something else. I can add more pages and so on, which again, it's all about customization and what really matters to you the most. You got recent destinations, so quick access to that. You got recent calls as well, notifications, valet mode, and you can turn the screen off completely as well. Couple more things before I go actually. We have Drive Recorder. So if you're going to install apps on the infotainment system, yeah, on the iDrive system, you can go into Drive Recorder and you'll be able to record what happens before and after an accident if that was to happen. So in settings, you can select how long you want to record for as well. So before the trigger, you can record up to 20 seconds. And after the trigger, you can also record up to 20 seconds as well, which uh, is pretty cool. And you can select all the camera areas and this will save it onto the system as well. So if you go into saved recordings, you can see all the available recordings there and you can then export them to a USB device uh, for later analyzing it for whatever reason you want to do that for. The last thing also is the fact that when you put it into sports mode, you get this uh, iconic sound. So if we go into settings, so go into car, go into settings, general settings, and if you go all the way up to iconic sounds electric, what this does is you can have this full sound, so fake noise that happens when you put into sports mode. So every time you accelerate, you get that noise that goes with the acceleration as well. So if that's something you like, it's there. If that's something you don't like, you can turn it off completely. All in all, I think BMW have included everything to do with convenience and safety. They've put all the things that really matters in the BMW iX3. In terms of entertainment, you don't get those Easter egg like you do in a Tesla. You don't get uh, things like gaming in the car or watching videos whilst you're charging your car. You don't get all that kind of stuff inside of this car. But like I said, they do give you all the essentials. And that's what matters when you're paying that sort of money for the BMW iX3. So there we have it. That's the Gadgets Boy Tech Deep Dive into the BMW iX3. If you want to find out what's coming up next with BMW, then do check out electrifying.com. And if you like videos like this, make sure you check out Genie's full review of the BMW iX3. And we also got videos of the Mercedes EQC and the Audi e-tron as well. In the meantime, make sure you smash that like button, subscribe, share it, and wait, don't forget to hit that bell notification as well. So you'll be one of the first people to know every time there's a video up on the channel. Thanks for watching.